That one is on the top of that box, man. No. So, we are at Oxford Castle this morning, guys. We're gonna do all this little bit of a stretch. We're gonna do by the teddy stairs here. We've got some nice little spots in hand. And I've threw my magnet in, and I've already got a boy clock. But it's only me, Kirsty, and Marie today. So, um, I'm gonna be looked after by the girlies. So, uh, yeah, we haven't got Steve or Alison or Mr. Fox with us this week. And even Mike hasn't come out. So, um, for different reasons, I'm not gonna go into, but, Yes, that should be out within the next week or two. <laughs> Morning everybody! Lovely Oxford again. Let's hope the sun comes out in a bit. First row, got a part of a really old hoover, if you can see that. Mad, I've just pulled that out, this piece of metal, and if you look, it's actually stuck to a vulcanized stopper in an old bottle. That'd have been nice to pull the old bottle out, but there you go. Let's see if I can get the uh, stopper out the, out the bottle. Yes, so the glass is out now, out the environment, and uh, with a little bit of a tap, tap it on, drop it in the water. You say it was stuck to this like little bracket thing here, but yeah, it's a nice little uh, Vulcan eye stopper there, guys. Happy with that. And I've got a cog. I've got a cog off something there. Again, I don't know what that would have been out of because uh, I can see a cog in there. Oh, you can see that too in this light. Hmm. I'm intrigued what that is. <laughs> so I'll just check it. Well, there you go. Check your good because I think I think it might be a button. That little round yeah, thing yeah. that was on there, so yeah, take that back. Yeah. That one's on the top of that box, man. No. Yeah, we're in, we're in first <laughs> Steve, Steve, there's nothing, there's nothing in here in front of the castle. There's, there's not much in here, but I'm just gonna go that. Absolutely <laughs> fab. That is a second throw, probably third throw, but yeah, look at that. Nice. Nice. <laughs> and the cutlery begins. A dinner knife there, uh, fairly modern. So Marie just found that. We don't know if it's some kind of jubilee clip to a pipe or what, but 
I'm going to take it back in case it's a bangle of some kind. And I've just had, we think it's a stamp. It says Gordon Jarvis Banbury, which is just north of Oxford. So I'm going to take that back and clean that up. There we go, we've got something off a PlayStation there, look. Oh my god. I bet that won't cheat when somebody had to buy it. Is that a padlock? Probably a modern one by the looks of it though. Hmm. Strange little part there. I'm not sure what it is, but it's one of them. Got to take it home and clean it up. And we've got some sort of little pouch that tips to your belt. Nothing in it. Bunch of keys here and a padlock. Oh. I've got a load of keys here and a padlock, but yeah, another modern one. We got that, and I thought I've got a juice off or the top of a key, but I'll take it back and clean it. Once Glenn had checked his crud, this fascinating piece was in fact a folding corkscrew dating back to mid-Victorian times. And this design made it compact enough to carry in a gentleman's or lady's pocket, ready for use at any moment in a time when wine culture flourished. Well, there we go. Got it out of the way. The spoon. So that's the third one. I've had out of Oxford now. Michael had a plain one the other week. I had one with 37 on. I've actually had one with 12 on, which is in my blast house. And now I've got a 326. Wow. Mad, isn't it? That's mad. Well, now Michael really likes it, so I'm going to give it to Michael. Oh. There you go, some kind of pole. Oh, what's that? Bike pedal. And a bike clock. I've got some sort of fit in there, quite heavy. And a screw, not sure what that's for. This is some kind of small base. Something, I have to clean that up just in case it's off a shell. And we've got an old bike saddle. And a little red light. So I'm going through my scrap because I found a big enamel tub. I moved the other side of the bridge from the girls. That's lovely, there's growls in here. Oh, I'm cleaning my scrap up. And look at that. There's an early Victorian pipe bowl stuck to that there, look. So that's got stuck in the crud and come up. And three quarters of a bowl, but yeah, still a piece of history. And going by the heel on that, I'd say that's probably 1750s, that one. That well, looks like we've got a a little old lady's pen knife there. If you look at that side, it's like a mother of pearl. Yeah, I don't know if it'll come up, but we'll try. So I had these bits earlier, guys, and these are like hubs off, off carts, very small ones off push bikes and that. So we're going to take them back and clean them up. So I've had a very old pickle fork. I've had an old glass lens, which I'm going to keep actually. Little old glass lens, probably have an old push bike. And I've had a little grappling hook. But it's too far gone, so I'm not going to keep it. All right, I've just been round the other side of the camera, show you some of my bits. I've got a child's obnail boot. Look at that. Look how small that is. Beautiful. And got. A modern padlock. One of those, uh, are the wing nuts, Glenn? Glenn? Huh? Is it a wing nut? What they call those? Yeah. Wing nut, there you go. <laughs> One of those. Uh, handle off a knife. Oh. Half of a knob now there. Bit of chain. 
a padlock with loads and loads of crud on it. So I'm hoping that might be an old, a really old one. So we'll soon see. You never know, dear. You're disappointed about this one. Unfortunately, it's broken, but it's an old Victorian top to the downpipes. Yeah. Beautiful, very heavy, but unfortunately broke at the bottom. Well, Glenn says that used to be, there'd be two of them, and the, you'd pin them together, like a claw, and they used to be to grab pieces of coal. Well, that's a shame. I think that's an old button. You can just see it there. It's got a very fine crisscross pattern on it. No writing, unfortunately, but a button's a button. When Kirsty found a piece of crud and this small piece emerged, once she'd cleaned and researched it, it came to light that it was, in fact, a 1700s lead token. In the 17th and 18th centuries, across England and parts of Europe, lead tokens were a common sight. These small pieces of lead played a crucial role in everyday transactions. Lead tokens were versatile and served multiple purposes. In some regions, employers would give them to workers who could then exchange them for goods at the company store or with local merchants. The designs on these tokens varied. Some featured simple geometric patterns while others bore initials or symbols. These tokens are remarkable pieces of history, each telling a unique story. Well, at least I've got a nice key today. You have to love keys. So, yeah, got a key. So I've just found this. Now, I don't know if this is Victorian, whether it's something off a door or what. I, I kind of recognise it, but I can't think what it is. Is it off a post box? Is it off a lamppost? I don't know. We'll take it back and we'll clean that. It's cool, isn't it? That yeah. is proper. Lovely. It's nice. I'm going to run proper. Oh, look at that little flag. It's, I love it. It's a Patrick's Day. Wow. Got a piece of old window wiper there, guys, off an old car. I've got this thing. I'm not too sure whether it's a... Uh, a padlock or one, look at that top off. Firstly, Kirsty found a lead token. And now, could Glenn have found the mould used to create such tokens? Just look at the similarities with this comparison. The tokens were typically made of lead, but sometimes were mixed with other metals, and varied in size and shape, but were usually circular. The creation of these tokens began with the crafting of a mould. They would carve or engrave the desired design into a durable mould, typically made of bronze or iron. This mould would bear the symbols, text or image intended for the token. Once the mould was ready, molten lead was carefully put onto it, capturing every detail of the design. After cooling and solidifying, the lead token was removed from the mould and any excess material from the casting process was trimmed or smoothed, resulting in a functional piece of local currency. Considering how extremely rare these moulds are, this could be a once-in-a-lifetime find. Amazing! First padlock of the day. Nice little unusual one there. Has the top of an old hob, an old range. We've got an old wood splitter there, look guys. And I've got another S hook, but it's a bit too thin for me to take home. I might usually take these back, but this will literally just fall to bits. Look, there you go. Well, I had a bigger key earlier, and I've got a little key now. It's nice. I know. 
people have just found the bottom of a sad iron and you gotta love the sad irons there is actually writing on there so once we've cleaned it up we you know we'll show you on the finds uh or we'll put a photo on of what what the writing actually says nice unfortunately most of the writing is gone but you can still make out a few letters i wonder what it would have said I've got the front of the fire grate. <laughs> so Marie's had that. I think that's. I think that's a brooch. I think that's a little brooch. It's got the the uh, the pin there. Look, as you can see. And she's had this one, which is a buckle as well. Look at that. That's beautiful. I can't even date that at the moment. I'll have to look in my buckle book. Sort of old enamel basin there, breaking apart to be fair. Well, look at what's cursed, he's actually pulled up. Look at that. I just think that looks beautiful. Yeah. Well, it's just laying there for Oh, no, years. yeah. That's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. And what is it, do we know? Well, Glenn seems to think it's a 1940s, maybe barley wine bottle or... Oh. So, bro, yeah. I'm going to check my crud now because well. there's a lot of crud around that way. Easily 30s, 40s, a bottle. Mm. Could be like it. a... It's a small beer or it could be a barley wine. I know they used to do the green bottles in barley wine as well. I've got an old pair of scissors. No good anymore. But look at that for a little old troll. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, is it a bad one? Yeah. Awesome. Think so. Yeah, it is. Definitely is. I recognise it's a good friend. But it looks like Glenn's found one of those old brass money boxes. How did you pull it up, brass? Glenn, how did you manage to pull it up? The springs inside of them. Oh, is that? Yeah, there yeah. you go, the springs inside of them. But yeah, as you can see the brass there. Just one of those old bank money boxes. Nice. The Sloyd's Bank Saving Box, with its oval design, was more than just a container for coins. It was a tool for teaching the importance of saving money to young people. Engraved with the name Lloyd's Bank Limited, each box also had a unique identification number, making it a personal treasure for a young saver. And this one Glen has found is numbered 104431. Children would carefully insert their coins into the front of the box, which featured different slots for different coins. And the primary purpose was to encourage saving. Children would deposit their coins and when full, they would take the box to the bank to have the contents credited to their savings account. These Lloyds Bank money boxes were distributed from the 1920s up to the 1970s. Look at that, guys. Little old uh, fishing reel. It's still actually got the line on you. <laughs> I've got a bit of a padlock, chain padlock. Would have been quite an all night uh, fire poker by the looks of it. And I've got a little diddy padlock. <laughs> a little one. So, I've got an old Victorian corkscrew. Now, Steve found one of these before and I got it nice for him and I give it him back. But uh, this one, it's a bit far gone. We're going to take it, but I don't know if it's going to last. Two folding Victorian corkscrews in one day. Brilliant. I've got P 
piece of a chain, not that that's interesting, I just realised what it was actually, I thought it was a little low shoe, but there's no horses, that's small. Um, got this little piece as well, not sure what that is, I don't know if it's an eyelet of something or what, see? Where all these little things I'm taking back, so I'm checking them. It's a really unusual little piece, it's, not, it's almost like a heart shape. Glenn seems to think it could be a really old fold out, fold out uh, screwdriver. So we'll take it back and carefully give it a clean. So that'd be a lovely keep if it is. This is an item that we haven't yet been able to identify. And that's where you come in. We're turning to our amazing community of history enthusiasts for assistance. Maybe it's a tool a draw pull or something entirely different. If any of you have seen something like this before or have any idea what it might be or just want to take a guess, please drop a comment. Any information, no matter how small, could be a huge help. History hunting is all about the journey and the discoveries we make together. So your input is invaluable to us and we can't wait to see what you come up with. Right, yes. we've got this fabulous scrap yes. man here, Frank. Frank scrap metal collection. Frank yes. scrap. Oxford um, prepared to travel all over the country to collect some scrap metal. Our job is not to just get scrap metal, but to clean the environment. Lovely. So, so yeah. So that uh, we can contribute towards the future of our children. That's right. Yes. That See? is Frank. Yeah. Yes. And Frank. Yeah. Frank. Um, what, wants as much business as you can, he'll come for a little amount and he'll come for a big amount and if it wasn't for Frank to die, yes. we would have been stuck. Yeah. So, big thank you to Frank. So, Frank, Scrap Metal, I will put the, uh, yeah, I'll put his number and everything on, on uh, the video. So, if you're in Oxford, Oxfordshire, please, please give him a tinkle if you need some scrap collecting because he's bang on. No, I want. No job too Thank big. you very much. No job too small. No job too big, no job too small. Perfect. We are happy to do any job yeah. in the UK and Oxford, everywhere. We are prepared. We yeah. are prepared to work with people who are willing to clean the environment. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you very much. Fabulous. Thank you, thank you very much. And it's all because of you. Did you think I'd forgive? Forget it. All because of you. It'll be clearer in a second. All because of you. So, it's come to the end of the day, we've had some amazing finds, some lovely pieces of history, but these guys here, big shout out to Wellington and to Frank, awesome. I'm going to put their link on the YouTube channel guys, if you're in Oxford or anywhere, they will come to you, <laughs> anywhere. So these lads have really saved our bacon today, and there's lots big of respect. And there's lots of people coming. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of people coming, but like subscribe if you haven't already guys. Go to their link and help these boys out. <laughs> the Finds Roundup. Hello everybody and welcome to part one of Oxford. What else can I say Marie? There was that much history come up that we are going to have to do two parts to that place in Oxford. So uh, this is part one guys. Next week is going to be the other half of what we've had. Which is, so this week really I'm getting the youngest finds, but the oldest finds are on next week's video. But we still had some good finds this week, didn't we, Marie? Oh, yes. Amazing. Like, I never thought when we started Beaky Dippers that we were going to find this kind of stuff. It's just amazing. So I'm going to show you what we've got here, guys. Um, it was a lovely day. It was only me, you and Kirsty, wasn't it? Mm hmm. Um, and then part two, you'll see Steve and Alison joined us in because they're seeing what we pulled out, you said. 
But uh, <laughs> now they ain't in part two either. And part two either. No. Oh no, they're not all that. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Snoozers or losers. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to show you what we've got, guys. We've got some nice little bits and bobs. So, uh, yeah, it's a mystery coming up. Except for Marie's modern padlocks. Hmm. Modern padlocks. I've got a little small one as well. You yeah, have, yeah. A little yellow one. You're not going to lose that. <laughs> you know, hurry on. You? Then you pulled this one up, didn't you? This one's nice. This one's oldish. It's not mid roll, but it's oldish. And we like the look of these old padlocks now, don't we, Mara? Yeah. So we're going to keep these for a little project we're doing. Then, well, I don't know why I even bought this back. It's a little lens out of an old push bike. But I thought it was a glass, you see, and it's nice plastic. But it's still, I don't know, put a little light behind it or some I don't know. We'll use it somehow. Or one of the biggies will. Then we have got this sad iron which is missing the angle, unfortunately. Um, and we were struggling to see what was on there, but once we took a photograph, I could actually see West Bromwich, which isn't a million mile from here. So, um, West Bromwich, um, so it's a West Bromwich company that made this old sad iron. That, so that, that ended up in Oxford? That, yeah, well, yeah, they got sold all <laughs> over the country, didn't they? Then we was both we was started by the castle that morning, didn't we? And I pulled up part of an old bottle. It's still I don't know how I pulled it up, thinking about it now. But it got a vulcanized stopper still stuck in the top. And um it's nice to find these, um as you'll see on next week's video. Is it next week's video that I see it? Now the weekend. The weekend. The week after. <laughs> so we are so ahead of ourselves for once. Um yeah, we did uh, do something where we found a few of these. So uh, yeah, um, Vulcanite stopper, very early rubber, and uh, these was on bottles all the way up to the 40s, 50s. Then a piece of clay pipe bowl, which I found stuck to a piece of, uh, I think it was like a car gas fuel cap, wasn't it? Uh, so nice, nice bowl there. Nothing to write on there, but we keep it. Then, you pulled up this little thing, Marie, and if you look on there, Papa, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, I can make out a little star. Can you see it? I'm not sure. It's like a little star based around that centre circle. Now, I have been looking, but I can't confirm it. I think this is a little trade weight, or a seal. It's not lead, because it's magnetic, but I think it's something more than what we thought it was because it's got a, it's got like a, a little star on there but i've got to come back to you perhaps next week with more history on this because i've got to research it a little bit more i would be telling a lie if i knew what it was i think sometimes i did mix other metals in with them now as well i think oh, well so. i don't know then because we were by the castle and we used to pull all shoes out from there didn't we remember mm. and then some man come and told us ages ago this was years ago that there used to be some stables by the uh, castle, and that's why we was finding your shoes. But I found that. And that is, actually, to what I can see, is a horse buckle, which would have been calvary. So whether it's for the horse or whether it's for the person on the horse, I don't know. I can't find much information on this buckle, yet I've got a buckle book in here. In, in but this is to do with like equestrian but i can't even give you an age it's getting on a little bit um got some remains of the chrome the chrome in around it so i don't know it might be very early it might be very light i don't know but there was a lot of crud around it until i cleaned it up you found a little of now boot heel which we always like to find um so these would have been Hammered onto the old school shoes back in the day. Everybody says they're just military now, they're not. They used to have them in just normal civilian shoes as well. Because back in them days, you've got to remember, we didn't throw everything away once we used it. We had to reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. So, yeah, nice little boot heel. We think here we've got another piece of annular. Now, again, I haven't dated this one. This one's going to go to go on to next week's video. 
But this little loop here would have spun round and it would have been about probably the same length as that circle. But this is bigger than the ones we normally find. So I've still got to come back to you about that guys. So I do apologise, bear with us, we have found a lot on this one Oxford. Hence the fact we're going to do two parts. We've got a lovely little toy gun where I found. A little toy rifle or cowboy rifle from back in the day. I think probably 50s when Cowboys and Indians was about, um, not mega old, but old enough. And it wouldn't it be nice if I could make like a, a stock for that and then just put some rust protector on and some oil and just put it on the wall. Just nice, really nice piece of social history. Um, some child would have played with that. Imagine a child running around with that now. Huh. And then we found, um, I found this stamp. It's actually an old stamp, if you see it's back to front. Might be the wrong way around on the camera, I don't know. But, it's back to front anyway, it's an old stamp. And we think this could be part of a bookmaker stamp to confirm your bet. Well that's all we can find really, isn't it? It's, um... That's all we can find on this. Um, we can't really find a lot more to do with Gordon Jarvis. But it says Gordon Jarvis, Calthorpe Street, Banbury. So uh, Banbury is what? 15, 20 mile at the most, northwest of Oxford. Yeah, no, so, well, all we can find dealt with horse racing and greyhound racing, I think. Yeah, so, so it might not be to do with horses, but more dogs. Mm, could be. Sure. Anyway, so yeah, I mean, uh, still a nice piece of history, and if the building still doesn't exist now, mm. then even more so. Bit of social history. Then I found this money tin. And I was hoping for lots of little shillings and stuff like that in it, but the bottom fell out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a uh, beautiful little team. It's a Lloyds Bank Limited. Um, and if you, I don't know if you can make it on the camera, but on the camera it says insert notes, six pences, sixpence. See? Yeah. Um, and it's got all the different uh, money slots, the different size coins to go into the money box. And some little kiddie would have had that. I mean, this was in bad shape. Uh, this was all ripped. Somebody had tried to get into it before it was thrown into the river. And I've just managed to tap it all back just to show you guys. But uh, yeah, it's a lovely little piece. Um, I'm not too sure on the age, probably could be 60s, 70s, couldn't it? Could be a bit. I think it's between 1920s and 1970s they issued them. All right, well, there you go. So yeah, uh, nice piece again. Social streets were really like uh, some little kiddie saving his his uh, six pences up in there if Aww. he was lucky. Then uh, the, I think the best finds of the day personally for that day, well not for that day but for this part, are these. Now I've got a version of each one, and I thought at first, and I should have known because Steve's had one of these. Yeah. I never finds anyway. I thought it was a Jews art, but it's not. It is. A Victorian, mid-Victorian corkscrew and just so that I can confirm that they do open, there's another one I bought. You had well. two. I had two on the same day. It looks like you've got specs on by the way. Does it? Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful little pieces of history. 1850s, 60s. Um, so yeah, really, really happy with those. And that's it for this part one. Part two will No, be... it's not. What? What else we got? Well... What else we got, Marie? Well, Kirsty found a lead token. Oh, but that's on the video. <laughs> but what did you find? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm glad Marie's here sometimes. Right, so, you will see that Kirsty's had a mid-17th century lead token. Yeah. Which is very rare to pull out. Again, we're pulling a lot of stuff out that's not magnetic. It's just stuck in the crud. Which is why I always say, check your crud. Mm. So I pulled this up, and at first I thought, it's some kind of weird padlock, or something along them lines. But, I was looking for Kirsty's lead token on the internet, and I came across that, and I was like, I've got that. And this is, we believe, a lead token mould. 
So I have texted um, a certain person that's very big in the YouTube community in history, um, along the foreshore, I won't say no more, <laughs> um, and he says if that is a lead token mould, it is an amazing find. Well, I think it's an amazing find anyway. Um, but yes, yeah, so this lead token mould, I have looked, and it, that's ranging from 1750s. So, out of that stretch there, we've done very, very well. Yeah. Just with part one. Just with part one. Well, we, we, need, we could probably go on to have a word with the museum about that. Yes. At the same time. See, that's... I wouldn't white glove this because it's just a piece of metal. But next week, I will need a white glove because I can't handle what we think we've found on next week's part two. So this week, uh, next week on Thursday guys, 8pm British time, look for part two of this video because it is out of this world. Um, the piece in question I will show on the video so that everybody can see it. As I say, I will have to use a white glove or some latex gloves to protect it. Um, well, between now and next week, we're going to be in yeah. a few talks, aren't between we? Between it, uh, now and next week we are going to be in touch with the museum because <laughs> there's only two ever been found. I think there's only one. There's got to be another one because it's been recorded on a picture. Has it? Yeah. Mm. So I think, to, to what I've read, it's the second one ever found. Right. Uh, well, there's one been found, so I would have the second one. And again, it wasn't magnetic, it was just checking my crud and it came up with something that I never dreamed. Explain. Yeah. Yeah. But next week's video, guys, please, please look out for it. If you think this is good for history, next week's is going to blow your socks off because it was absolutely amazing. If I can get some results back from the museum about that one item there, mm. then even better. If not, if we can get them on video, that'll be even more. If better. we have to go to the interview, uh, to the, um, if we have to go to the university or the museum and have an interview with them we'll try our best to do that yeah, yeah. and put the footage on but next week's video guys absolutely amazing so uh, i'm looking forward for this weekend because we're going somewhere we've never been before perfect i'm not saying that more than that <laughs> um so yeah uh, we've got it all coming guys if you think this is good next week is going to blow your socks off if you're into the history like we are now then you're really going to enjoy what we found. Let's put it like this. Second one ever found in the country? Potentially. I'm not bothered about money. It's not about money. If the museum keep it, they keep it. But it's, it's a piece history, of it? British history oh, yeah. that will never be uh, replicated again. Or it will be a long time before someone finds the third one. Mm. Right. Okay, so other than sounding very overconfident and very cocky, <laughs> I'm going to leave all you lovely people to it. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already to the channel. This channel, and I'm not saying it because of me or anybody, this channel is going to go places. We're making sure 2024 is the time it's going places. We're not giving up. We're not going nowhere. We're just going to keep hammering and eating away at this history. We're going to be working with the museums. We've got some very big meets coming up soon. And we've got some brilliant ideas that we're going to bring into the channel other than the boat other than uh, the, the mudlarking that we do now and again we're going to bring everything into this channel and it's going to slightly take it out the magnet vision as an all but we're going to be kind of dipping our towels into different waters intent <laughs> but there you go guys so like subscribe and god bless Big love to you all, and I shall see you on Sunday's Live, 3 p.m. British time. And then do not miss next week's video, part two of this one, at 8 p.m. British time. <laughs>